this case uh, a 10 year old female presented with loss of consciousness for past 1 hour on examination she is drowsy she is hypotonic however her vitals are normal so an unconscious child very common presentation in an emergency situation uh, what quick history should be elicited when you encounter a comatose or an unconscious child in emergency uh poison ranjini says poison yeah waiting for more answers trauma poison seizures anything else anything else related to poison maybe seizure previous food fever very good drug intake hypoglycemia excellent all are correct last meal okay uh, again pointing to hypoglycemia ketosis fasting history of fasting any anything else seizure you have already told drug you have told past history of similar illness uh related to 10 year old female uh maybe she was uh, walking in a jungle or <laughs> yeah an animal bite which animal bite snake okay so a history of any snake bite or a scorpion i think these are important pointers uh the next question is again to the students is when should you suspect a snake bite when should you suspect a snake bite i'll hand it over to dr vikram to take it from here right so uh, most of you have said uh, most of the right things any unconscious child presenting to your pediatric emergency you should ask for fever right fever is the first thing we ask uh, it's a tropical country we have so many infections so it could be encephalitis it could be cerebral malaria it could be enteric encephalopathy so fever we have to ask abnormal body movements right it could be a post seizure state post ictal state or unconscious child so you have to ask for any history of any abnormal body movements any history of trauma right then somebody of you said animal bites specifically snake bite or the scorpion bite recent vaccinations injections any medications they have received any history of any drug intake history of any poisons then past history of any similar illness whether the patient had similar episodes in the past so you suggest you of some transient ischemic attack or a syncopal attack so that is all to be asked also i would like to say in the emergency whenever you encounter an unconscious child look at two things blood sugar because many a times for hypoglycemia you may not get any kind of history and the child will be hypoglycemic but that is a one thing which if you see it is readily correctable and will give you good results second thing is bp it is often missed hypertensive encephalopathy could be a cause of unconsciousness and many a times it got missed because we have not checked bp right and ideally the bp should be taken four limb bp but at least one bp recording should be there in every unconscious child it is a part of vital monitoring but somehow i feel it get missed uh, when you are uh, evaluating a unconscious child and so, look for fan marks vikram how are the yes sir so uh, when we say a b c d e when we whenever we examining a critical uh, critically sick child so a b c d you all know airway breathing circulation d is for disability and uh, dextrose e is the exposure when you are not getting any much clues on the history or, or superficial examination you should completely expose your patient and look for any any clue you can get any fang marks any bite marks any injection marks i i remember one child unconscious child in the month of winter he came to us parents give just didn't give any sort of history the child was con- unconscious and when we remove the jackets and everything we find so many injection marks on the forearm that child was a case of cocaine drug abuse he was taking but parents were not aware so you should just completely expose the patient look for any injury marks any any sort of clue which you can get right uh, so uh, this patient when we examined completely so that, that was a very very tiny mark on, on on the right index finger can can you appreciate all all this it's a very it's a single fang mark usually classically we see a double fang mark but since it was on finger it's a very small uh, fang mark on the right index finger and next day the parents come with uh, they found a snake uh, in the near vicinity they killed the snake they brought the photo of that snake to us found to be as a crate bite we gave anti snake venom to this baby and the child improved uh, so that that is a lesson from this uh, case that when you are getting an unconscious child you should take a good history all those points fever abnormal body movements had trauma snake bite vaccination drug intake past history but you should also fully examine the child every body part should look at the nail beds sometimes you 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 get those if somebody is taking some drugs you in the inside the nail beds you can get some evidence of that drug intake 
right some some sometimes you can get uh, if the uh, person is involved in some kind of assault in some kind of fight then some some skin scrapings may be there inside the snake so you have to act like a detective so this was the case and uh, so snake bite sometimes you may not get a very clear cut history but you should still suspect snake bite uh, especially in the regions where it is common and post monsoon seasons where when the snakes are out endemic areas and when you have you have not got any clue unexplained encephalopathy then you should always keep it as one of your differential diagnoses so dr vikram uh, i like to know from you but i'll also ask the students first uh, that you said that uh, uh, we like a detective so for a clue can we have some uh, do we have a diagnostic test to confirm that it is a snake bite or we just have to go on your clinical assumption students first uh, i'll ask the two students and then we'll come to you uh dr bhanu says btct whole blood clot test uh but uh, this is isn't it specific to one specific kind of bite uh all kinds of bite may not 20 minutes whole blood clotting test 20 minutes whole blood so uh exactly so this is the only test which you may do but again this is very uh, specific for suspected viper bite um suppose if you have a cobra or a crate bite uh would that also have uh, uh the wbcd positive dr vikram yes uh, so diagnosis of snake bite is entirely clinical there are no definitive or gold standard test to prove a case of snake bite some people say uh yes the uh, 20 blood whole uh, 20 minute whole blood clotting time can be done that is true uh it can be done in case of uh, bite by vipridi family mainly uh, uh viper bite uh so another pitfall uh what what i observe that uh, uh post graduate students use those uh, uh red vials uh, the plain vials but it is specifically mentioned that this test is to be done in the glass vial okay right so you have to get a test tube for that you just collect the blood of the patient keep the test tube still for 20 minutes and after 20 minutes you till that test tube to see whether it has clotted or not so if it is a vipridi bite uh the the, the blood will still be in the liquid state and it, no clot has formed So right. that is important that it has to be done in a glass vial. Do not use your usual plastic or other containers in which you collect the blood for other uh, tests. And uh, for the other clinical manifestation, ptosis, breath holding test, uh, these are good for the neurotoxic uh, bites that are there. Uh, now, Doctor Vikram, the ne- again I ask the same question once again uh, as in the last uh, uh, case. what should not be done in a child or what are the common errors that students or residents may do while managing a child with a snake bite i think you also tell us about the first aid measures the wrong first aid measures that are done uh, and also the wrong management in the facility tourniquets okay we already have answers coming in uh, tourniquets uh, should never be done uh, if there is a tourniquet don't open it immediately that is also correct do not tie a tourniquet don't compress bite area uh, immobilization like fracture patient uh, should be done or should not be done uh, because you have written this i am not uh, clear what what do you mean it should be done should be done okay in season at bite site should be done or should not be done in season at bite site not done okay not to be done exactly decompression should be done using bp cuff if tourniquet is present uh okay uh okay should we attempt to should you ask the parent to, or as a parent should you ask to attempt the attempt to catch the snake or kill the snake pakad ke le jao to acha hai the doctor may diagnose quickly should you attempt to uh catch the snake or okay what else dr vikram your take yeah so a uh, snake bite you can encounter at two places uh one is outside clinical setting outside clinical setting i mean also uh when uh, you are working in a primary health center or some place where ultimately you want to refer the patient and then uh what you can do in tertiary care centers So in outside the clinical setting, as Sir has already said, uh, it is not to be encouraged the practice of catching the snake, killing the snake. Right? That that can lead to more fatalities. So 
but uh, however it is recommended that you should uh, make an effort to identify the species of the snake but that could be done if you keep some photographs of the common snakes in your emergency and you can just show those photographs if you can keep a booklet that is good but right now nowadays everyone is having those tabs and phones they can just show it to the parent that whether the snake look like this or look like this and they may identify so they should not be encouraged to kill or brought the snake to you then does it uh, does it help in specific treatment dr vikram because riti says identification is not important as antidote contains all the three snakes antivenoms yes sir uh, antivenom uh, sometimes we need to give some uh, other therapies like uh, apart from anti snake venom we will discuss uh, later so that 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 decision can be taken earlier if if we know the correct species of the snake so uh, but uh, however that that killing or the taking snaps or bringing the snake in the casualty is not to be recommended then some people rightly said that uh, no tourniquet a uh, tourniquet can be applied if if it is applied by a trained personnel see it should, it should not be very loose enough then it will not serve the purpose and it is not to be tight enough so as to cause the gangrene of the affected limb so what is recommended is you apply a tourniquet you splint the limb and the tourniquet should be uh, tight enough or loose enough to uh, allow one finger beneath it so uh, so that that is that that is we uh, recommend so it not to be done by a layman only those who are uh, expert in doing a tourniquet they should do however if tourniquet has already been applied and the patient is brought to you with a tourniquet in situ then you should not immediately remove that tourniquet until you have make sure that you have everything available in the emergency to take care of his airway and you have anti snake venom already loaded because it has been seen that sometimes the patient suddenly collapse when you just suddenly remove the tourniquet then no manipulation of the wound area no bollywood inspired moves there so no licking no sucking at the wound nothing to be done not to panic not to panic in a situation you have to encourage the patient also and the, those who are bringing the patient the treatment is available and most of the time snake bite patient if they reach in time the results are excellent so uh, one should not panic uh any other tips i like that no bollywood type <laughs> so any other tips uh, which uh, we should not follow while those who are watching nagin uh, regularly uh, the serial so okay in that was just in a lighter way please carry on dr vikram so uh, uh, another important thing is sometimes uh, it is kept as one of the differential there is no clear cut history you have not found any injury mark but uh, there is no point in delaying the treatment if it is kept as one of the differential see uh, you can wait for some time but uh, anti snake venom has no major side effects it can just lead to some uh, allergic reaction which can be taken care of but if it is there if it have you know ruled out most of the things and it is there in one of the differential there is no harm in trying but there will be harm if you delay the treatment unnecessarily yeah vikram there is somebody has suggested dr reddy has suggested atropine neostigmine for neurotoxic bite can it be given yes uh, for cobra bite for cobra bite particularly which is a post synaptic which acts on post synaptic junction atropine neostigmine can definitely be given it is it leads to improvement it leads to improvement rather rapidly than anti snake venom anti snake venom will uh, act on the toxin which is there yet not bound to your nerve terminals anything But, specific for crate other than asv yes sir uh crate bite recently there is case reports that people have used calcium gluconate for crate bite see crate bite is different crate bite is different because it acts on pre synaptic terminals it just inhibit the release of calcium calcium itself is a neurotransmitter and it is seen that crate bite can lead to prolonged neuromuscular weakness there are several case reports two recently published from our department as well so people can a uh, uh, patient can take uh, even months to recover from crate bite which is not seen in other a uh, snake bite in snake bite you give anti snake venom and the next day the patient is sitting uh, but in crate bite they can take a unusually prolonged time it is seen that if they are taking longer time than usual the calcium does help in the early extubation of these patients so calcium can be given in crate bite and atropine neostigmine can be tried in cobra bite specifically uh, thanks dr vikram uh, we have uh, just uh, i'll again give 30 seconds for the students to ask questions if any related to management of snake bite management and uh, so we'll wait uh, before we go on to the third case anything they you want to ask about snake bite we'll wait for the questions you can open the tourniquet after starting the anti snake venom uh, vikram that was a query yes yes definitely 
वंस यू हैव स्टार्टेड एंटी स्नेक वेनम यू कैन रिलीज द टूर्निके बिकॉज वट एवर वट एवर सिस्टमिक टॉक्सिन इज देयर नाउ दैट विल बी बाइंड टू एंटी स्नेक वेनम एंड इट विल न्यूट्रलाइज दैट any any tips you would like to give on uh, administration of asv uh sometimes it is given as a very slow infusion i have seen the uh, residents give it over 4 hour 6 hour what what is recommended is you initially see the dose it is not weight uh, dependent because amount of toxins injected uh, amount of venom injected is same whether the snake had bitten a child a newborn or a adult so you want to counter that venom amount of venom so it is 10 is anti snake venom vials for every child uh, every age group so it is to be given diluted in ns and it is to be given over 1 hour only thing is you have to have a good patent vein uh, because it can lead to severe irritation and then you have to take care of allergic reaction which are expected uh, so that can be that should be watched for yeah dr reddy has correctly written 10 vials 10 to 15 ml per kg of normal saline over 1 hour uh, another question was Uh, is new stigmin atropine necessary if the child is incubated early it is not necessary but uh, it will help uh, if the ch- child is bitten by a cobra so it definitely helps in the better uh, 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 but uh, uh, your neurotransmission so the child recover fast uh, uh, if the uh, atropine new stigmin is given what is the maximum dose of asv uh, uh, it has been documented that you can go up to 20 vials also so you give 10 vials over a period of 1 hour uh, then you wait uh, for the signs of recovery in next 2 to 3 hours if there are no signs of recovery you can repeat the dose of 10 vials again what is the importance of test dose of asv uh it is usually uh, not recommended uh, because uh, uh, there is no time to look for this uh, the allergic reactions you can straight away start with the infusion and you yeah. you watch the patient for whether they develop any anaphylaxis uh, dr reddy has also said no test new guideline no test dosing required for asv uh, management of neuroparalysis so neuroparalysis will take its time the toxin which has already bind to the nerves that is that is not going to improve with your asv so neuroparalysis will only going to take its time but the recovery is usually fast in cases of cobra bite in crate bite as i already told you it can take days weeks uh, we reported a case which took around 3 months uh, one month on ventilator then uh, some gradual recovery up to the age of 3 months so uh, it may take the paralysis may take time in cases of crate bite especially okay thank you dr vikram